Hey what's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Inuzalea and today I will be showing you... Whoa. How to become Ant-Man in Adobe After Effects. If you enjoy watching my videos, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you stay notified when I upload new videos. Without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> While I was making this video, I was thinking to myself, what would Peter McKinnon do if he had this power? <sighs> then that's what I'm talking about. Some good coffee right here. If only I could have some more. Wait a minute. I think I just got an idea. Now that's what I'm talking about. So, in today's video tutorial, I will be showing you how to create the Ant-Man effect in Adobe After Effects, both to scale down and also when you're little to integrate yourself in the scene. But before we start, I want to talk to you about something quite serious and something that all video editors should be aware of. So, when I was young, I was sitting on my computer a lot making videos not really caring about how I was sitting. And now at the age of 25, I do have some problems because of that, not taking care of my sitting posture and so on. I have a tennis elbow and an injury on my shoulder, which comes back more often than I want to. And that's probably because of many different kind of reasons. But the main reason is I'm sitting very often hours and hours behind my desk. And I wanted to improve that and work on that. Now that I'm a little bit older and wiser, I care a little bit more on how I sit behind the desk. And I find it important to share that with you guys as well. So maybe you don't have the same problems as me and you can avoid them. So the first thing that I've done is my chair wasn't the best chair. I just went to the store and took a cheap chair that I kind of liked how it looked but that wasn't the most important thing because my sitting posture in that chair was terrible and also not as comfortable as I wanted it to be and I was sitting in that chair for hours and hours a day so you really have to think about how important your investment is like for a bed you also want to invest more on a mattress that really fits you because you're sleeping there half the time of your life and for an office chair it's kind of the same thing because I sit for hours and hours a day so it has to be really comfortable so I started looking for a chair that would really suit me and really improve my posture behind the office and I came across GT Omega racing chairs which are really really awesome they have a ton of possibilities to choose from so I reached out to them and they were so kind to send over two chairs for me to try out and one is for my colleague Arnaud which does the business with me together so basically both of the chairs are really comfortable I tried it and immediately it was a big improvement over my last chair that I was using it sits super comfortably and it also kind of forces me to sit in a correct posture yet staying very comfortable staying in that posture it supports my lower back and my neck which is really important so you can sit back and relax and your entire body is supported which is really important and even after using this for one week I saw an improvement in my posture and how I felt my shoulder doesn't hurt that much anymore my tennis elbow is becoming a little bit better but I also take care of that apart from the office so I do stretchings and exercises to improve that but it is a real problem because imagine it would get worse I wouldn't be able to create anymore that would be a nightmare but I'm working on that I also went to Ikea and bought a foot support so I can have a good posture and then this chair is really a big deal for me you can also entirely modify this chair which is really awesome every single detail they thought of so if you're a tall person a short person this chair could actually fit for many people because you can completely modify it and still end up with a very comfortable result so that's what I wanted to talk to you about real quick it's kind of serious but it's really important to take care of and also don't sit too long behind the desk take some breaks once in a while and without further ado let's jump into the tutorial all right so the first thing that I've done for this shot is I went to the time where I kind of press my watch right here and I will duplicate this shot by going to edit duplicate then I'm going for the roto brush tool and I will double click on that layer and brush myself out here so just really paint over your body like that and then hold alt to remove parts and there we go once we're done with that click on your layer go to layer 
pre-compose this layer, move all the attributes and rename this Roto. Then I'm going to right click on that layer for time and freeze this frame and then I'm also going to trim this layer until here. For this layer I'm also going to duplicate it one more time so the original footage edit duplicated and we're also going to trim this one till where it ends here. Then I'm going to solo the entire video clip right here and I'm going to the end because right here I have a clean plate which I will be using right click time freeze frame. Of course yeah my computer is uh, turning here so you could use a video clean plate in this instance. I'm just going to be doing it with an image as it doesn't really matter that much for a tutorial but that's what you should be doing if you're really recording. Make sure that the movement in the background is still there. So I'm going to unsolo this here and now what we have is basically a intro video which ends right here and then the roto if you can see if we solo this layer we just have rotoscope myself out here uh, very fast so what i want to do here at the beginning of our roto layer is go to the anchor point and change the position the pan behind tool underneath my character and then press S on the keyboard and click on the stomp punch for the scale and move 20 frames forward. To do that, I'm going to hold shift and press the page down key twice. That will move 20 frames forward in time and then change the scale to zero. So now we have this animation, which looks pretty cool. I'm going to toggle the switches and enable motion blur for this layer and also for the composition. And there we have that. Then I'm going for layer again, recompose it one more time. And I'm going to move all the attributes again scale down effect and click OK. So now that we have this, what we want to do is go for the effect echo. So we can search that right here under time echo. We can apply that to our layer and we can just simply increase the number here. Also increase the decay or decrease it actually. So we have something like that and also offset the time a little bit. And now we get something like that going on. And basically, we're already at the end of our effect. That looks pretty cool. Of course, we're going to add a simple color correction tint effect here and set that to 25 or 50 percent. Then go for effect, blur and sharpen and add a Gaussian blur to blur out that kind of echo uh, a little bit more. So we can increase this number quite a little bit. And there we go and also change this layer to an additive mode and press T on the keyboard and lower the opacity a little bit. So now we have something like that going on. Okay, so now what I wanna do is click on that layer and duplicate it, Control D, and then just remove all the effects here and just put that below our layer and make this normal and also at 100% opacity. So we have our original footage. Uh, we should have duplicated it, but yeah, I just took it back very quickly like this. And now we have something like that, which looks really cool. Then lastly, what I've done for this effect, I also imported a simple uh, kind of smoke layer, which I got from actionvfx.com. I will put a link in the description below if you want that as well. Set it to 50 of scale because it's 4K footage. And then change the blending mode to a screen. And I have just put this on the bottom of my screen. And then just like when I disappear, I kind of want to pop in that smoke effect. And of course, if you want the animation to happen faster, you can just dive into your composition here, the pre-composed composition, press U on the keyboard and just move this keyframe in a little bit and then you will have a quicker animation. You can also dive in and then just set these two layers to right click, keyframe assistance, easy ease, and then just go into the graph editor and play with these right here to smoothen out the animation a little bit. And there we have it. So that's how to create the scale down effect. Next, what I want to do is work on this shot right here. So I shot myself with a green screen in the background. And as you can see, uh, quite a messy space because it's so small. We don't have much space. And I also didn't have a green screen on the floor. Uh, you could do that essentially, but yeah, in this case, I didn't do that. So we're going to have to rotoscope the legs out right here. But as I knew that up front, I didn't move my feet and then it's gonna give us an easier job to remove that. So the first thing that I've done is went to the pen tool and just quickly roto, well, make a mask around myself right here something like that. I'm also going to give myself a little bit more space. If I move my arms a little bit, press F on the keyboard and just feather it a little bit and then go for effect keying key light 1.2 and choose with the screen color. 
the green color right here. For the view, I'm gonna change that to a screen matte so we can better see our keying. And then we're going to increase the clip black to 15 and this to 85 and maybe increase the screen black here. I'm going to uncheck this and pick another color to see what that does. Okay, that's looking a little bit better. And we can just also move this mask in a little bit more. And there we have something like that. Go for final result. And there I have myself keyed out. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep it very basic for this keying. If you wanna dive in a little bit more on the green screen effect, just go and yeah, figure it out yourself. No, um, I have other tutorials on that. I just don't wanna spend too much time here on the green screen keying. And then what I wanna do is duplicate this shot here. So Control D, press M on the keyboard and remove that mask and also remove the key light. We're going to just um, focus now on the legs. So I'm going to double click on that layer and then I wanna pick the roto brush tool again and then just paint out my legs like this and just uh, do a quick job here zoom in a little bit and kind of tweak it hold alt to remove parts drag around my feet here and do it as good as possible so once you've done that we want to move like one frame forward and check if everything is okay move frame forward or move 10 frames forward immediately normally it should be good here because i'm not moving my feet as i told you before i kind of kept that in mind uh, before i started on this roto it's gonna make my job a lot easier and then once you're done just click on the freeze here and that's going to freeze your entire rotoscope and then we're ready to go okay so now go back to the tab of your composition layer and now we have two layers in this composition one if we solo it is the legs keyed out like we can see right here looks like that and if we solo the other part this is the green screen so together it makes this and of course you can see some green right here so you can just simply go to the reduce um well the shift edge and just put that in a negative value and just yeah clean it up a little bit go for the feather and the contrast play around with everything until you have a good result um, but basically that's how you do it and then click on these two layers and go for layer pre-compose keyed out character and then click OK and once you've done that now we want to bring in our clean plate in the background so what I've done for this one is I took a video here and as you can see um, well it's just of my keyboard my mouse pad and I also kind of put something in front of it first uh, to focus on that small object that was kind of going to resemble my my size so like a little bottle of, or of some kind like eye drops would be a great example and then I'm focusing on that so the background so the background really blurred out that kind of bokeh action because I shot this like wide open and then we get this kind of result so if we bring back my layer right here we have this uh, kind of look and of course it doesn't look perfect yet but we are gonna make it perfect so what I'm going to do is duplicate this shot and then go for effect generate and add a fill effect and just with the pipet tool I'm going to choose one of the darker colors in my scene and now we have a dark shadow color right here I'm also going to toggle the switches and make this layer a 3d layer and then move with the pen behind tool this to the bottom here and then I'm going to press W on the keyboard and then just rotate it on the floor and then rotate it on the Z space, also on the Z axis uh, to get some kind of shadow cast. And I know my shadows are going in that direction. So that's something you should check before you're making your shot and then go for effects, blur and sharpen and Gaussian blur and just increase that quite a bit, something like that. And then also I want to go for my mask tool and just mask out this part here, subtract it, and then press F on the keyboard to feather it out a little bit. So you get something like that going on, uh, which looks pretty cool. Okay, so my feet, of course, uh, I didn't key them out uh, very good in the first place, but to kind of hide all the imperfections, what I also like to do is create a new solid layer and also use, again, a dark color of the scene, click OK and then disable this layer and then with the pen tool I'm just going to drag around my feet like this and this is going to create some kind of ambient occlusion effect on my feet so I'm going like that and there we go and then I'm going to enable this layer again press F on the keyboard and kind of feather this a little bit and put this below 
the other layer. Also make sure that the shadow layer is below that layer as well. And now if you open up uh, for the mask options here, we can also increase the expansion to your preferences and play around like that. And of course, if you're going to see that in the real size, it kind of looks good. Uh, well, you should work on that definitely. But what you can do as well is kind of duplicate the shot, press F on the keyboard and lower the feather here a little bit. Um, do something smaller like that. And then press T on the keyboard and also lower the opacity here. For this one also, lower the opacity and kind of really match it a little bit better, of course. I'm also going to offset a little bit more to the right. And just playing around with everything will get you the results you need. And just starting out with a better key uh, will also improve a lot. So another thing that I like to do is when I saw my bottle, my eye drops, I saw that the top was really in focus, but the bottom part wasn't really in focus. And that's because we're really shooting something so small. Uh, so yeah, it kind of depends on your preferences. But if you want to also fake that, what I like to do is create a new uh, solid layer here. And then on that layer, I want to go for effect generate gradient ramp. And everything that's white is going to be affected. Everything that's black isn't. So I'm going to make my blacks white and my white black so the top part is in focus. Then I'm going to disable this layer and just click on this start of ramp on the face and then the end of the ramp like at the bottom here. And then what I want to do is if I enable this you see something like that. I'm going to disable that, right click new and create a new adjustment layer. I'm going to put that adjustment layer on top of myself here which is this layer right here. Go for effect, blur and sharpen, camera, lens blur. And I'm going to use a blur map here. So I'm going to select that adjustment, well, that solid layer on top here. And you could of course name everything to have a little bit of an easier time doing this. And then also select effects and masks. Now if we're going to increase this kind of like a lot, you're going to see that I actually had to do the opposite. So of course everything that is white is going to be affected. So the top part shouldn't be affected and the bottom part should be affected. And now you can see what I'm trying to do here in something like 15 and also repeat the edge pixels or like seven. But that's also going to help a lot with like fixing the problems here. And of course, these are like way too intense. So I'm going to lower the opacity here quite a bit. Also for the original shadow, you can also lower the opacity quite a bit. And there you have yourself standing on your desk as a small person. So you do need a green screen in order to create this effect. Um, but as you could see, you can also rotoscope some things. And yeah, it was pretty DIY in my office as well. So that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed it. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more. And definitely check out our website, CraterGalaxy.com. We have a ton to offer for any digital creator. And if you buy something from our website, it really helps to support this channel. Hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye. Oh, damn it. I broke my watch. How did I get back to my normal size? Hello? Hello? Anybody hear me? Help me, please!